Vacuum Analyzer option in Agilent's FieldFox microwave analyzers is surprisingly good and not what you'd expect from a handheld instrument. Fundamental spectrum analyzer specifications such as third order intermod, phase noise, amplitude accuracy, and spurious performance are quite outstanding and comparable to what you'd expect from a benchtop instrument. Agilent's InstaLine technology performs a realignment before every sweep. This results in extremely high amplitude accuracy at all times, regardless of ambient temperature and regardless of how long it's been turned on. As a result, the Philfox has a zero warm-up time, so it's always in spec from the moment you switch it on. Let's start by looking at its sensitivity, or displayed average noise level. Here we're looking at an L-band frequency. We're tuned to 1.5 gigahertz. You'll see I've got the attenuation set to 0 dB and the preamplifier is turned on and we've got averaging turned on as well with uh, 10 averages. And you'll see I've got a 50 ohm termination connected to the spectrum analyzer input to ensure we're not picking up any stray signals. And if I turn on a marker, you'll see here marker 1 uh, we're measuring around minus 148 dBm. That's in a 10 hertz resolution bandwidth. And if I press more marker function and the noise marker, this will normalize the amplitude measurement to make it as if we were measuring within a 1 hertz bandwidth. So you can see here we have a noise floor or displayed average noise level of about minus 154.7 dBm per hertz. Now let's change to a K-band frequency. Let's select, for example, a frequency of, say, 22 gigahertz. And we'll just let the averaging settle. And if I reach in the marker, you'll see even up at 22 gigahertz, we've got an extremely impressive sensitivity for about a minus 142, minus 143 dBm per hertz. The Spectrum Analyzer on the FieldFox has all the functions you'd expect on a benchtop analyzer. Here I'm looking at a, a series of carriers around 19.8 gigahertz, and we can turn on the markers, so I can uh, press the peak button. So marker one has gone to the largest carrier on the display, and we've got six markers we can turn on. Uh, so marker two, for example, I'll set that to normal. We'll put it to peak, and then I'll go marker two, more, peak right. So we can turn on up to six markers, and we can even turn on a marker table to display the frequency and amplitude values of all six markers. Now, as you saw previously, we've also got marker functions. So we've got the noise marker function, which we use to make a normalized measurement to a one hertz bandwidth. There's also a band or interval power marker. And also, we've even got a built-in frequency counter. If I press the marker button and then press more, you'll see here on the right-hand side it says frequency count off. If I now turn that on, Marker 2, which is the currently selected marker, has now activated a microwave frequency counter. So at the end of each sweep, the spectrum analyzer pauses, retunes to that frequency, performs a frequency count, just like a normal frequency counter, and displays very accurately the frequency at that marker. It's just like having a frequency counter on site, but without having to take an extra instrument. But there's one additional advantage. With a normal frequency counter, it can only measure the frequency of a single signal being presented at the input of the counter. But with the marker counter function, we can have multiple carriers present and measure the frequency of just one of those, even in the presence of all those carriers. And just like on a benchtop analyzer, we've even got multiple traces. If I press the trace button, you'll see we're currently viewing trace one, which is the yellow trace set to clear right. In other words, it clears the screen, writes a new trace, clears the screen, and writes a new trace. But we can also turn on a second trace, and currently that's set to blank, but let's select that to be, say, max hold. So this is the light blue or white colored trace here, and you can see now that is storing the maximum amplitude value ever seen. Very useful for capturing and identifying intermittent signals, perhaps. We could turn on a third trace, too, and we might set that to min hold. I'll turn those off.
You'll also notice on here we can select the detector type as well. Currently it's set to automatic, but if I press that, you'll see we can have the normal detection mode that you're used to on a spectrum analyzer, but we could also select positive peak, negative peak, sample detection, and average detection. I'll put that back to automatic. You'll also see a button here for record and playback setup. That's where we can record the spectrum analyzer trace into the internal memory and log it over a period of time. But for more details on this feature, please watch the short interference video where we cover it in more detail. Markers are great if we're measuring the amplitude of CW signals or their harmonics. But as you can see, I've now turned on some 16 cram modulation on our 19.8 gigahertz signal, such as we might receive from a satellite downlink or a microwave backhaul. You'll see that much of the RF power is now spread across a, a wide range of frequencies. So if I press the marker button, turn on marker 1, you'll see the amplitude value it says is approximately minus 65 dBm. But that's fairly meaningless really because most of the power is not where the marker is. It's, it's spread across roughly a megahertz or so of RF spectrum. But with the Field Fox's built-in channel power measurements, we could automatically make a measurement integrating under the curve of this broad spread spectrum signal, and it'll tell us the total RF power within that band. So I'll press the measure button, channel measurements, and I'll press channel power. Now I know the bandwidth of this signal is roughly 1.2 megahertz, so I'll just set the integration bandwidth to 1.2 megs. And you'll now see that the Field Fox is automatically calculating the total RF power, the channel power. It says minus 47 dBm per 1.2 megahertz. In other words, between these markers here, which are spaced 1.2 megahertz apart, the total power under that curve is about minus 47 dBm. And it even calculates the power spectral density for you in dBm per hertz. If you're not sure what the channel power is of the signal that you're measuring, let's just go back to the channel measurements again, and this time I'll select Occupied Bandwidth. Occupied Bandwidth is very similar to channel power, but whereas with channel power we tell the Field Fox within what bandwidth we want it to measure the RF power, with Occupied Bandwidth uh, the Field Fox automatically calculates within what bandwidth 99% of the power is contained. And you can see here that 99% of the power is minus 47 dBm, and that is contained within an occupied bandwidth of 1.23 megahertz, not 1.2 megahertz as I thought. And the final channel measurement that you may be interested in is adjacent channel power. Now adjacent channel power is very similar. Again, it's integrating under the curve of the main signal. But if you want to know how much of your signal is leaking into the adjacent channels, we can set here the offset frequency and the integration bandwidth for both the lower and the upper channel. And it will automatically measure the power within the main channel. And you can see here that the power within the next adjacent channel at a lower frequency is minus 33.9 dBc, in other words, dBs below the carrier. And of course, with the Field Fox, we can save that screen image at any time to an internal memory, USB stick, or SD memory card, along with the complete instrument state and settings we've been using. For further information on the Field Fox microwave analyzer, please contact your local representative or visit the website shown below.